It's over. The hearing's over today. The arguments were made. The summations were made. The judge heard the testimony. Both sides wrapped it up in the Fannie Willis disqualification case. Do you want to go through this? Want me to tell you what happened? Do you want me to tell you without the hyperbole, without looking for a particular result, but tell you what the truth is? That's all I can tell you is the truth. You don't mind that, do you, if I tell you the truth? We'll get ready. First, I don't know what this judge, I, I don't I don't like when people, you know, always kind of ridicule judges because judges have a tough one. This one, this man has absolutely no control of anything. This, this was, there was so much wasted time. But, <clears throat> wasted time, but not the right time appointed. Let me explain to you. Point number one. If, if Fanny Willis had walked into court, walked into court simply and said that day, ask me a question, judge. Ms. Willis? Yes. Did you have sex with Nathan Wade? Yes. Does he work for you? Yes. Is he your subordinate? Yes. Did you appoint him because he was having sex with you? Yes. Was he qualified? Absolutely not. Did he know what was going on? A ab absolutely not. He's, he's, he's one of the most incompetent people I've ever met in my life. But I only appointed him because we were kind of boyfriend, girlfriend, and I threw him some, you know, money. Did you appoint him so that he would buy you things? No. No. I happened to be worth $8 million. I don't know if you know this, that, but no. I didn't appoint him so that I could send him money via his, his unearned fees so he could turn around and send it back to me. And if I did, and if I did, Judge, what does this have to do to disqualify me from prosecuting President Trump and others? I know that may sound crazy to the law people, but why is, why is that a conflict of interest? A conflict of interest is when you have a stake in the case, when your motivation has something to do other than the prosecution of the case. For example, let's assume that Fannie Willis were stooping one of the defense lawyers. That would be a conflict. That would certainly be a stake in the case, throwing, oh God, Talk about conflicts, yeah. Just having a relationship isn't a problem. Look at uh, look at Ashley Merchant with her husband. They're together on the team. I mean, that doesn't mean anything. See, that that's all Fannie Willis had to do. She had to, all she had to do was tell the truth. Just say, yeah, ma'am. Now, she might be in violation of uh, ethics laws in Georgia. She might have been in contravention of laws regarding um, relationships within the office of the district attorney that she signed off on. There was some indication, believe it or not, that Wade might have been theoretically unqualified to be in the grand jury room. I think the biggest issue, the biggest issue that might get her disqualified, maybe better than this, is when she decided to go before a black congregation, a famous civil rights tabernacle, and speak on behalf of how this proud black woman has been targeted by... You got it? That might have been a problem. Believe it or not. Still, enough to get her disqualified? I don't know. Enough to maybe have her sanctioned and removed for perhaps poisoning a jury pool? Maybe. But remember, disqualification. To be disqualified, it's rarely done. It rarely happens, and for good reason. Because rarely is there a situation where the prosecutor has a stake in the case. Does that make any sense to you? Good. Now, going back to what I said, listen carefully. All she had to do was tell the truth. And she would, there would have been nothing. We would not have known who Nathan Wayne was. We wouldn't have known who Terrence uh, Bradley was. Wouldn't matter. Because she would say, I did it. That's it. End of discussion. No need for a hearing. 
no need for anything because she said, no, no, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you this. I'm the district attorney. Doesn't matter. What are they going to testify to? What I just said? I just told you. You're not going to call Nathan Wade to verify what I just said. I just told you. You're not going to call Terrence Bradley in to verify what I told you. I told you the truth. This is it. That would have been it because, but, but, because believe it or not, that, that may be unethical. It may be a grounds for a, a bar action. It might be a violation of the disciplinary rules. It might be, it might get her, her canned again within the, the Georgia uh, office, the Georgia, what am I trying to say? The, the professional ethics or, or the, the ethics campaign ethics. She might have violated laws regarding cash from her account. All of that has nothing to do with her being disqualified from the most important criminal case of her career. And all she had to do, listen carefully, was tell the truth. That's it. It would have been over. In fact, her candor would have been so refreshing that it would actually work to her benefit. People would say, wow, she actually told the truth. Yep, she sure did. Wow. But that's not what she did. That's what this is about. And the reason why Judge McAfee should have said, excuse me, I'm telling you right now, you can argue all you want and I'll hear your arguments, but I'm telling you right now, I'm going to disqualify her. Not because she hired her lover or because he's incompetent. No, but because this case is so corrupted that the public image, the public uh, uh, view of this, the what, what this has done to, if ever there was a prejudicial case, if you think you're going to get a jury in this case, if you have so contaminated, not only the jury pool, if you may have forever affected and completely destroyed the image, not only of the court, but the prosecutor's office, the American juridical system, you name it. And not only that, I'm going to have a hard time. I'm telling you, I've got a conflict. And I may be getting off, and, and I don't know if he's actually going to be the judge who was assigned to the trial. I don't, I don't know. But he should say, I'm telling you right now, I am conflicted because Ms. Willis, Mr. Wade, Mr. Bradley, you lied. You lied repeatedly. You lied about things that never made any sense. You lied about matters that, had, that weren't even necessary. And Mr. Wade, you're so bad at this, you lied and you just had your divorce case go south because if your wife's defense, uh, a divorce lawyer does not reopen this case and go after these new assets that nobody knew you had until, we, until this came out, nobody would have ever, we would have even known your name. It wouldn't have even mattered had Ms. Willis just told the truth. But now we know about this and your impotence and your love affair and how you have this crazy idea about lying, perhaps under a divorce pleading, because you didn't acknowledge and honor your marriage as being that of happy. It wasn't a happy marriage. It wasn't a, you see what I'm saying? Mr. Bradley, this guy is so bad. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Be on the lookout for this. Number one, whistleblowers within the office are going to come forward. Judge McAfee said, it'll be about a couple of weeks before I come up with, a, with, with an answer or whatever. This may make it even more complicated because I promise you, the defense lawyers are going to say, Your Honor, we have new information, new information that may shed more light, not on the tawdry, because this is not about their sex life, it's about lying. It's, it's the old thing, it's not the lie, it's the cover-up. You know, you know, it, it, it's the old Bill Clinton thing. 
But what they're going to be doing is they're going to be doing this in front of her. And, and, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there's a new case now where they're, he said, I haven't seen Mr. Wade in two years. And you try to pin this guy down two years from 2019 or two years from today. Two, I, I, he is a walking contradiction. He is a walking obfuscation. He is, a, he is the, the master of mendacity. The prince of prevarication. He is without a doubt like nothing I've ever seen. And there's a new story about somebody who called up either either Ashley Merchant has said, you know, I heard him say that he never talked to Mr. Wade. I'm a I'm a waiter at some restaurant and I saw them together. So that's coming up. So I mean, so you're you're gonna be hearing things behind the scenes, plus the people in that office who hate Fanny Willis with a passion. None of this. Let me say this again to you. And this is this is the most important. So when you're talking to your friends and they're asking you, what do you think about this? The big takeaway, which is the most interesting, what I've been telling you, is that this was all manufactured by Fannie Willis. This arrogant, stuck-up, opinionated, egocentric, egomaniacal, I think borderline psychopathic, deluded lunatic who does nothing but just imagine herself as being this paragon and princess of importance and but when when it, when when none of this is even even remotely necessary the stories the way these stories start they were so interesting first i don't know we were not i was not uh, uh, mr wade well here you are what about the trips well the trips came after so you did have an effect well yes so from 2019 until 2022 you're telling me it was hands off? Yes. So when your friend, Mrs. Ms. Yurdy, who, by the way, had to leave lest she be fired, who basically that you sublet your apartment from, when she said she saw you hugging and kissing in 2019, what was that? That wasn't a relationship? Everybody and their mother knew about this. And you expect, and you're lying under oath yet again. And you sit back with this arrogance, this cocksure attitude, this kind of a, I don't know what it reminds me of one of these, I keep telling you, like a Karen, like one of these lunatics at a at a at a at an airport who's about to jump over the the the, the, the counter and start choking somebody. I mean this I, I, But then in the most surreal surreal, you know when you catch a kid lying. And they, you know, the old, you know, the, the dog ate my homework kind of a thing. But when kids come up with these preposterous, fantastic, um, fantasy-laden, these these impossible versions of what the truth is, you, you ask yourself the question, what is, what is it that could possibly, possibly have made you think that this story is even remotely legitimate? And that's our friend, Mr. Bradley. I saw him, it was two years ago, yes, no, two, one, two, even within a sentence, he'll say things like, I haven't, have you seen, have you talked to Mr. Wade? Yes, no, well, one, two years ago. Wait a minute, we went from yes to no to one to two. Which one of these is the answer? And nobody nails him down. They don't say, excuse me, let's make sure we get this. You're under oath. He does this repeatedly. They ask him one time, can you lie or something to the effect, do you lie for friends or could you lie or, or something? And he said, yes, no. And, and they, 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 don't, they don't stop him. They don't say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's make sure you understand this. And I'm going to do this. And he takes 10, uh, 15, 20 seconds to answer a question. This is an eternity. He, he is, he cements in you the idea that he is a nincompoop. That he is a fool. Now, bottom line, bottom line, Fanny Willis is in so much trouble. If there's justice, if there's justice, she is looking at perjury, 
every kind of ethical and procedural and disciplinary rule you can imagine under the under the sun, especially by going out and poisoning and tainting the entire jury pool of Fulton County by claiming this is about a black woman. No, it's not about a black woman. It's about lying in court with two people who may happen to be black. So what? In a black shirt, she's doing everything. She has this idea that the rules don't apply. She would tell you, you don't understand what's happening. I'm Fannie Willis. I don't need you and your stupid rules. I'm Fannie Willis. We're going to be hearing more about this, my friends. This isn't over. This isn't even anywhere near over. Thank you so much for making this so much fun on my part. I I have I so enjoy speaking with you. And I apparently you like it. So do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the little uh, little bell, little light, little bell so you'll be notified of live streams and new videos. And as I ask you to 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 impart a, uh, upon us your wisdom, please I ask importune and, and beseech and, and request that you comment as you see fit. 